In this video, I'm going to do a very quick introduction to the uh, the Dirac notation. So that, that was invented by Paul Dirac notation, and it's essentially just uh, a way of of showing uh, linear algebra. So so vector algebra, linear or vector algebra, and for some reason it's pretty much used only with quantum mechanics, which is kind of weird. It's, it's, it's a very useful, it's a, it's a nifty little way of doing uh, linear algebra, of doing uh, vector algebra. And so it, it's, it, it just seems like it's sort of exclusively used in quantum mechanics. But uh, if you've watched my my uh, vector algebra, or if you just know about vectors already, then this is pretty much just the same thing, but uh, a little bit different. Uh, but so we'll start with um, the terminology. So this is what is uh, so it's called direct notation, sometimes called called bra ket notation. So bracket, it's it's supposed to look like bracket. So uh, a bra vector is one where you write it like this with the uh, the angled uh, bracket here pointing to the left, and then the ket is in the opposite direction. And this tells you something about these different uh, vectors here. Uh, and essentially what they tell you is, well, the first thing you could maybe say is that this tells you that it's a row vector. So the components for this would be something like a1, a2, a3, dot, 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 a, n. And this one is a column vector. So it would be something like a1, a2, a3, dot, 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 a, n and that is now in a column vector. And the difference between these two is uh, is mostly uh, if we are using complex numbers. So complex numbers which use uh, imaginary numbers. So complex equal uh, real plus imaginary. Uh, imaginary and so an imaginary number uh, you may have heard is is the square root of negative 1, which is impossible. You can't take a square root uh, of a negative like this, and it's often de denoted as I. I think, uh, I think elect uh, electrical engineers uh, sometimes use J for it, but in physics uh, you will mostly see it written as I. And the fact that it is the square root of negative one, uh, it's so conceptually that's not really that important, uh, except for the fact that uh, if you have i squared, then that gives you negative one. Uh, so you're just squaring this, which uh, just gets rid of the square root, and that gives you negative one. So multiplying to uh, two i's together it gives you negative one, uh, and then if you <clears throat> if you had uh, if you had uh, say i cubed, that would give you negative i one, uh, which you could just say is negative i, and so there it, there's kind of a it, it kind of oscillates between giving you negative one and negative i, uh, then if you have i4, that gives you uh, negative, negative one again. Uh, and if you have i to the fifth, so that's uh, negative one and then uh, times another i, so that's a negative i, so it just kind of keeps going back and forth like that. And so that when you are actually doing sort of, uh, uh, sort of elementary algebra with using eyes, then that is uh, how those are used. Uh, the way you will often see I is uh, 
is you will see it as the exponent uh, in in using the constant e like this, uh, so i times uh, your variable, and this is what is called the the Euler formula. So this, uh, I'm not going to prove it here, but uh, you can find proofs for this uh, is equal to cosine of x plus i times the sine of x. Uh, and you may have even heard of the Euler identity, which is e to the i pi equals negative 1. Uh, and so this just comes right from this. So if you put pi in for x, uh, then your trig identities will come out to be equal to negative 1. And that's how you get your Euler identity from your Euler formula. Um, and so uh, another, well, I guess we can move down here to what I have prepared here. So the uh, complex numbers can be written like this, like it's a unit circle. And so uh, when, you, when you add, uh, so if you have just, say, 1, for instance, as a real number, then you are right here. And then if you add, uh, then if you add i uh, times some number, then you will move up this way. Uh, you will move up this way um, according to that number. Or if it's if it's uh, negative some number, then it will move down this way. Uh, but you can also see how this works with our Euler formula here uh, that. Um, we, if we have a vector pointing in this direction, uh, then then we can, uh, uh, which is the e to the i, uh, when they're using psi here. Uh, so that's what this vector is. And then the components of the vector are the cosine, which is the horizontal, and then the i sine, which is the, the vertical. And you can see that the vertical is telling you uh, how it's going into the complex plane here. So that's what it's called when you move off of the the uh, real number line here into the complex is that we're going into the complex plane and sine since it's multiplied by i is the one that's telling us how far we are in the complex plane here. So I have this over here because these are the uh, sort of normal unit circles for uh, for sine and cosine and we can see that uh, that that it's it's somewhat analogous here that that uh, that we have our our sine going uh, up here in the vertical direction and the cosine uh, in the horizontal direction and this uh, here this the function over here tells us uh, sort of where on the unit circle we are. So if we're here, then we are at zero uh, uh, in the function here. And then we have to go all the way around to here to end up right here, and all the way around to here to end up over here. That's, uh, that's analogous here to the, uh, to the complex numbers. And so another thing in with complex numbers is what's called the complex conjugate which uh, I already kind of alluded to here, and that is this. So we can have a complex number where it's x plus the complex number or x minus the complex number. Then they are sort of mirroring across the real number line from each other like this. And <clears throat> you can see that, uh, that the, they have the z here with that line over it. So you will often see the complex conjugate uh, so if z is our uh, is our complex number, the complex conjugate you'll often see either written with a line over it or with uh, a little asterisk by it. Those can both denote that that is the complex conjugate. And what happens with the complex conjugate is if you take the complex number and multiply it by the complex conjugate, then you get, uh, so you have your x plus i, y, and then x minus i, y. I'm not going to go through, you. I mean, you foil this out, so first, outside, inside, last. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but I'll show you 
uh, you end up with x squared plus y squared. And if you, uh, if, if you remember your Pythagorean theorem, you can think of this as essentially being z squared equals x squared plus y squared, and that is just the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, it's, so if we were using only real numbers, this would be how you write it, but when you're using complex numbers, you have to also take into account the fact that this one is the complex conjugate, so it's not as, uh, it's not as straightforward as if you were using the real numbers, but you essentially get the same sort of result here, is that it's uh, sort of the Pythagorean theorem. And so, uh, going back to what I was talking about before, uh, that's what, so the, um, the row vector is the complex conjugate of the ket vector. The bra vector is the complex conjugate of the ket vector. Uh, and so if, if, we, if we actually wanted to show this how it should be, we would have these uh, this way, then we would put little asterisks by all of these, uh, telling us that these are complex conjugates. Uh, and so, for instance, uh, well, I'll use a smaller vector here. So maybe we had a1 plus ib1 and a2 plus ib2 as our, our ket vector. Then the row vector would be a1 minus ib1 and a2 minus i, b2, and that would be our row vector. So you can see these are complex conjugates of this. And if we were to multiply these together, uh, we would end up getting a, uh, it, well, it would be a complex number, but it would be a scalar value because this is, uh, this is pretty much the uh, dot product. And what we would have is we'd have, uh, we'd have, uh, so I'm just going to go back to this notation here so that I don't have to write out all of these. But we would have our A, our A star 1, A1, uh, plus our, our A star 2 times A2. Uh, like I said, I'm using this notation up here and uh, sort of collapsing these down into just a single a single letter here. Uh, so uh, maybe I could, just to make that clearer, uh, I will use a different letter for this. Um, and so maybe we could call, we could call one of these, uh, we could call one of these, uh, uh, we'll call it just S, I guess. Uh, so that would be S1 S2, S1 star, S2 star. And so it would just be uh, S1 star times S1 plus S2 star uh, S2, and that will equal some complex number here. And so that is uh, how you multiply uh, how you multiply bras with kets. And I will get into, uh, in the future, how you uh, multiply kets with kets and how you multiply bras with bras and uh, things like that. But when we have this, uh, when we multiply like this, the bra by the ket, the row by the column, uh, we can write it, uh, so we can write it like, like, uh, so we could say, well, I'll go back to my S notation here. We'll call this S and then S here. And this is the same as multiplying the uh, complex conjugate of S times S. Uh, and so we have this. Um, and if we are multiplying uh, two different things, so maybe we have, uh, we have A times B. Uh, so these are two different vectors, but we are taking the complex conjugate of the a vector and multiplying it by the b vector. Uh, and this uh, will be the same as if we, uh, as if we did uh, 
this. So if we just take if we just take the uh, if we just flip these around and then take the complex conjugate of that, it's doing exactly the same thing here, and uh, that should be uh, that should be kind of clear. Uh, from the fact that the bra is a complex conjugate, if you take the complex conjugate of the complex conjugate, then you get uh, you get the normal uh, vector back. And if you take the complex conjugate of the normal vector, you get a complex conjugate. And so you end up with the complex conjugate here and the normal vector there. And so this is uh, the identity that we can use for that. Um, so. Other things you can do with kets, uh, just like with uh, with normal vectors. I mean, kets are normal vectors. They're just written differently, essentially. Uh, so there is vector addition. So this will give you some uh, some new vector. Uh, we could write this as a one, a two, a three. If we have a three-dimensional vector uh, plus b1, b2, b3, uh, and that will give us a1 plus b1, a2 plus b2, a3 plus b3 uh, as a vector, and then we could just call that c1, c2, c3. So vector addition still applies here. Uh, we can still have our, our scalar multiplication, so uh, alpha times a is equal to some other vector here and we can write that in column form so a1 a2 a3 uh, is equal to alpha a1 alpha a2 alpha a3 uh, so you just multiply that by each of the components and that will give us our our c1 c2 C3. So yeah, the, the idea uh, once again is that uh, sort of normal vector addition and uh, scalar multiplication still apply when we're using the Dirac notation here. Uh, and the uh, sort of the other thing, the other takeaway message from this is this uh, this idea of the complex conjugate being the bra vectors. And we write those as rows, and <clears throat> we can multiply that with the ket vector, and that gives us a scalar value. And it is still a complex, so this is still a complex number here, uh, but it gives us that scalar value there. And yeah, so these um, this complex conjugation is... Uh, I mean, it's important to just remember that at all times, but it's something you really only have to apply if you are using complex numbers. If these were all just real numbers, then uh, then the row vector and the column vector really aren't any different. And, uh, and this right here, uh, so, I mean, like I said, you have to always keep in mind the complex conjugation, but if these are all real numbers, then uh, this... Uh, bra a times ket b is equal to the uh, the bra b times ket a uh, they would be interchangeable the order of the uh, of the vectors wouldn't matter if those are real numbers but uh, if they are complex numbers which are used quite a bit in uh, in quantum mechanics then you would want to make sure that you keep in mind that the bra vector is is complex conjugated. Uh, anyway, I think I've uh, droned on about this uh, long enough. Uh, I will make more videos here on this sort of notation, so uh, stay tuned for that, and I will see you in another video.